everybody, it's me, Kristen. Long time no see. Um, you might have seen my video I just posted recently with my presentation for my class, but I haven't made a video in a while other than that. Um, so, to give you an update, um, I, if you, I don't know if you saw my other video, but um, I was getting checked out for an eye disease called keratoconus. And so I got diagnosed with that. Um, now I have to go to a different place to get a different scan of my eye, or maybe both eyes, I'm not sure. I, I think both eyes, yeah. Anyway, and then they will decide, uh, then I have to, like, go back in, like, I don't know, six months or something to see if it has progressed any, and then we'll decide from there what to do. I hope I don't have to have surgery because it sounds, like, not fun at all. Um... <laughs> But, oh, so, uh, the keratoconus is basically, like, your normal cornea is shaped like this, but then with keratoconus, it goes like this, it, like, bulges out, and it changes the shape of your eye and, like, your vision and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's not good. And, yeah, the reason I found out was because I, um, well, these are just my reading glasses, but, like, um, I got some glasses in, like, the fall, and I couldn't, like, new, new total vision glasses, because I, like, wear contacts most of the time, but, um, I had to get some new glasses, and I'm like, these aren't working, <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, I, they were like, no, they're the right prescription, and I'm like, no, they're not, <laughs> anyway, so, then they scanned my eye and stuff, and it was being weird, so, uh, then I had to go to this other eye specialist, and so the eye specialist thought, thinks I have keratoconus, which is some weird rare eye disease. I guess I like rare diseases or something. <laughs> um, I'm also got some Invisaligners. I don't know if you can see them. My teeth are getting straighter. My teeth are getting straighter. I don't know if you can understand that. Um, and, uh, oh my gosh, it has been so hot here. Oh, I hate summer so much. <sighs> and the other day we had, like, wildfire smoke, which is, like, normal now every summer. But, um, like, this didn't used to happen when I was younger. Um, it's kind of in the last ten years, maybe. Uh, climate change is real. <laughs> um, so I suppose we're going to have to get used to every summer having forest fires and extreme heat. And I don't like it at all because I'm not a fan of heat or fires. Because <laughs> I like totally scared of fires. So, <laughs> um, and, oh, so I don't know if you saw my other video, but it was a presentation for my class because we were working... I was taking a class on voice assistants, which are like um, Google Assistant and um, Alexa. I can't say it very loud because the robot will go on. But um, so we were learning how to program those things. And it was really fun. Um, so I might try to make an app or two. I don't know. Like, I have to come up with some ideas for apps. I was thinking of making someone in my class made a or was trying to make a Tide app. And some do exist already, but I was thinking, oh, that would be a great app to make, you know, to check the tides, you know, the tide schedule. And um, so, so I might make one of those. What I worked on for class was, like, uh, um, so we had, like, three, three homework projects and then a final project. And for my... Uh, second two projects, I worked on a refill prescription app, so, um, but I had to do, like, kind of fake data and stuff like that, but, uh, so that couldn't ever really be a real app, unless, you know, you were working for a, like, a prescription company or something, but I think it would be really hard to have a voice-activated refill prescription, even though it would be kind of cool, but the thing is that, um, the voice systems, like, 
Alexa and um, and Google Assistant and stuff like that and Siri. Um, they don't um, always understand what you're saying. So in the case of like a refill prescription, um, like you'd want, like for especially for like names and stuff, like if you say your name or whatever, it might not understand like the spelling of your name or your name and it, it would have to be really precise um, for a refill. So I'm not really sure how that would work very well for a um, voice application because like, yeah, like they don't even recognize my name because they spell it wrong because I, I would say into the robot, you know, my name is Kristen and then it would spell it wrong. And then, like, if you're looking up data, then it would have the wrong spelling, which could be, like, a different person or whatever. Um, and then, like, you know, like, medication names and stuff like that. Although, you know, um, people who are blind, they would have to rely on a voice app like that. So I just think we need to improve the technology um, for voice assistance, um, but it's very complex that they even get it working at all because, like, they have to translate the computer systems. I mean, because, like, um, Amazon and Google and stuff, they provide most of the translation from, like, voice or sounds, you know, to, like, uh, text. So you're just doing the, when you're not doing the hard programming, of like transferring the voice to a text through phonetics and um, sound bite things and all that because that's already done like with the system um, but then then like individual people can write like apps that utilize this kind of technology but um, anyway <laughs> it's probably a really boring video um, but I thought it was really fun to make a voice assistance, and um, now ours weren't like totally complex or anything, but it gave us like a feel for a feel for them, and um, yeah, and what uh, I took another class um, about artificial intelligence like last year, and that was really fun too. Um, my favorite thing is. Um, genetic algorithms, which are like, basically, I think I might have tried to explain this in another video. Um, basically, like, you know how genes are like uh, uh, letters, like A, G, T, whatever, I can't remember the letters, but A, G, T, C, whatever. And then when you combine genes, they make other things and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, anyway, it's too hard to explain. I would do a bad job of explain, explaining it. But genetic algorithms are so cool that I just love them. Because um, they basically use um, the idea of genetics to solve a pr problem or whatever. Um, there are other algorithms, too, that are really neat. But... Um, yeah, I was really impressed with the genetic ones, uh, genetic algorithms. It's not like genes. It's just called that because it's like based on the same idea. Um, oh yeah, and so like this year has totally exploded with AI stuff, but um, which is kind of annoying if you're going to school because uh, people have been like um, in on discussion posts they like. Um, I don't know, they just like feed the question into chat GPT or something and then they have the chat GPT write the discussion post and you can tell it's written by a robot and it's really annoying because I don't want to like discuss things with a robot, <laughs> you know, like you're supposed to have a discussion and um, you know, they're just, excuse me, they're just, um, you know, putting in robot stuff and it's really annoying. Like, I've run into this several times this year. And I'm just like, oh, people do your own work, you know, just like, I don't like it when people, when robots write for people, 
you know, like, I want to hear what people are thinking, you know, like their own thoughts, not the robot's thoughts. Um, you know, I love artificial intelligence. I love learning computer science and like studying artificial intelligence, which is kind of strange because I really don't like chat GBT that much. I mean, sometimes it's okay. It's kind of fun to use, but like when people start like cheating with it and having it do all their work and it's just really annoying to me. Um, you know, I think it has its uses like, okay, I'll be stuck on a computer problem and I'm like, oh, I can't figure out this weird syntax or something. Plug it into chat GBT and say, fix my code, please. <laughs> and it will come up with something which I may or may not have guessed. And then I can kind of go from there. Um, it, it won't like fix everything completely, um, but it can give me some hints where I might not have guessed. Like if, like if I'm not familiar with a computer language, um, you know, cause there are a lot of different computer languages and when you're doing computer science, you kind of have to like learn on the fly, a whole bunch of different computer languages. And it's kind of like, Oh, so the syntax can get confusing sometimes. Um, anyway. Um, oh yeah. I also took this other class. Um, it was about math, but it was like computers for math. And that was really fun. My teacher was great. Um, <laughs> but one day we were having class and I was supposed to give a presentation. And like, I'm like, oh my God, I smell smoke. I don't know if I said this in another video, but anyway, I was like, oh, I smell smoke. What is going on? Because I had the door open and the back door in. And I'm like, this seems weird. <laughs> and then um, I looked it up online and like there was a house on fire in my neighborhood. So, uh yeah, that was weird. Um, but <laughs> the teacher's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I think so, but something's on fire. I don't know what. <laughs> um, it wasn't my house, thank goodness. But um, this house totally burned down. It was really sad. Um, anyway, fires, to going back to the fires again, totally scares me. Uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, summer's not my favorite season. Um, I like winter because it rains a lot in winter, and I love the rain. Um, anyway, I guess that's about. Talk to you later. Bye.